for this week's episode of the Scoop, a program that brings you news in detail. A look at the stories for this week. I'm Francesca Piribanda and you're watching The Scoop. Early this year, the Anti-Corruption Commission revealed that the Zambia Police Traffic Department was among the most corrupt departments in the police service. This classification of police traffic department has continued despite the police high command pledge to address corruption among its rank and file. Police traffic snap checks and speed traps is where corruption with motorists allegedly thrives. Four workers have been suspended at the National Youth Development Council, NYDC, to facilitate investigations into the alleged misappropriation of funds. Now, the Office of the Auditor General has been engaged to probe the alleged misappropriation going as far back as 10 years ago. The NYDC is a statutory body mandated to champion youth empowerment in the country. Police traffic roadblocks and snap checks are vital in ensuring that only roadworthy vehicles are on the roads. These checks also aim to ensure only licensed and authorized drivers are behind the wheel. This in turn helps to prevent unnecessary accidents which result in loss of property, more regrettably human life. However, concerns continue to emerge regarding these roadblocks which are seen more as avenues for corrupt acts between motorists and traffic officers. Some hidden camera video footage captured at some snap checks in Lusaka bring out suspected behavior of corruption. A truck driver who was impounded at a snap check for a defective tire confirmed bribing a police. The driver captured on a hidden camera a few minutes after being let go said that was not the first time he was engaging in corruption. Police service spokesperson Munganga Chanda admits some police officers do involve themselves in acts of corruption on the roads. As Zambia police would not deny the fact that we have some officers that are corrupt. Yes, those officers are there, but command is doing everything possible to make sure that it takes it, it gets rid of such people in the service. Now, command would not be there to see what is happening on the road. She urges motorists to always demand for a receipt once they make payments once impounded for any traffic offense. People should take interest in knowing what the fines, fines are for the different, tra different traffic offenses. Why? This is because it will help them to make some decisions. We have had situations where maybe a traffic offense is, uh, the fine is uh, maybe 58 kwacha. Then maybe the traffic officer will take advantage of your ignorance and tell you that such a traffic fine is 200 or 500. Then because you don't have the money, you will be prompted to corrupt that officer. But if you know that you are supposed to pay a certain amount, you will be able to argue that up, out and be able to pay the correct amount. Transparency International Zambia is concerned with corruption taking place on the Zambian roads. 
TIZ Executive Director Goodwell Lungu says his organization is working with the Road Transport and Safety Agency on new measures to curb corruption between motorists and traffic officers. Like it is said, it normally takes two people to tango. We have seen a problem on the part of law enforcement agencies as well as the officials who are in the habit of soliciting for bribes as well as receiving bribes from motorists. Uh, in certain cases, motorists just offer these bribes to, to, to break the law and get away uh, with it. Uh, so we've initiated a, a project uh, which the Zambia Governance Foundation have fully funded uh, and will be going in full swing quite shortly uh, to work with both the Zambia Police Service as well as the Road Traffic and Safety Agency in Indol as well as in Osaka uh, to see to it that um, uh, some of the loopholes that both the public motorists as well as these officials take uh, advantage of are uh, minimized. This project will only succeed if motorists cooperate with uh, us. Uh, we'll be devising certain strategies such as uh, recording uh, conversations, recording videos using phones so that they submit actual evidence uh, on potential as well as actual corruption that will be taking place at these uh, checkpoints. For we believe as Transparency International Zambia that uh, once that is done, uh, then people will be afraid to engage in that kind of uh, corruption and will help the law enforcement agencies quite um, a lot to minimize uh, accidents that take place as a result of uh, uh, not having, for instance, uh, uh, checkpoints that are effective that can allow defective vehicles to pass as a result of bribe. The Zambia Police Traffic Department has been cited by TIZ and ACC as one of the most corrupt departments in the service. Corruption on the Zambian roads being perpetrated by some police traffic officers and defaulting motorists is real. Convex Revolving Empowerment Fund is set to be unveiled next month. This comes after four women ex convicts of Chaisa Compound covered on the scoop two weeks ago appealed for empowerment to make a new start in life. The Revolving Fund is the brainchild of aspiring candidate for Kawata constituency Clement Tembo and the Prisoners Reintegration and Empowerment Organization. Most female ex-convicts returning home after incarceration need help with reintegrating back into society. Martha Chikwekwe, 24, Sida Piri, 42, Olivier Piri, 23, and Teresa Mumbi, 24, were all released from jail after three years of serving time on housebreaking charges. When the scoop team visited these women two weeks ago, their plea could be boiled down to three words. A second chance. So it pimpa go boma uti titandi zire kutianga nirepo itipase kwa ndrama za ma business. Uti ambego che ma business ya uti itikazizi sungira hapo tevine wake. At the time, it seemed like a far-fetched dream seeing that the reintegration system in Zambia is almost non-existent. The women who are squatting with the widow together with six of her family members have had nowhere to start from since the release from jail. As though having nothing at all is not bad enough. Their spouses left them when they acquired the new status of ex-convicts. Only a few weeks ago, these four ex-convicts didn't know their fate after serving their sentences. But thanks to this budding aspiring leader from Kawata constituency, Clement Tembo, for making them see light at the end of the tunnel. I want to invite the four ex-convicts themselves, those that uh, you know appeared on TV, for, for training. So we we'll sponsor that training is on the month end so that they can access you know uh, some some form of training to empower them so they are they're able to know how to access you know funds we we are going to link them to our friends that are going to give them uh, 
some capital on the 1st of September. So this is information that I can confirm that as of 1st September, we'll give them at least some startup capital. He has decided to include these women in one of his youth and women empowerment programs to enable them make a new start. I think uh, time has come when we are supposed to treat them with love and respect and also that uh, sometimes we, are, we cannot continue judging them. These are people that have got a decision to make and uh, you know our society and economy today does not allow for them you know, to set up. So when uh, I was informed about the situation I said uh, I had to go outside even my constituency because this to me is a national issue. Chaisa, they still remain brothers and sisters. There's no demarcation, there's no boundary. It's a sensitive matter. So when I was informed, uh, I was told that uh, they, they have not paid uh, the rentals where they are staying and uh, they've got arrears. So uh, we thought that we would take care of those uh, arrears for the rentals that they have. And um, we also bought them at least some you know, foodstuffs, grocery. And He's also cleared the rental bills owed by the widow looking after them and has also included her in the empowerment program, which is to be a revolving fund meant to benefit women in similar situations. We want it to be a revolving fund. So the first capital that we'll give them, they'll pay back, it will be a loan, they'll pay back and give their colleagues. We want to show the nation and the people that it is possible for a person who's in a problem to help another person who's in a problem. Prisons Reintegration Chairpersons has appealed to society and other leaders to emulate this gesture and reach society of poverty which can be prevented. We have a situation where these women have to go around now begging for uh, food, begging for this and so on. Because uh, their life is unbearable with their children here. They are even put together in the same house. So it is really a sad situation. So there is a possibility that these women could go into commercial prostitution. Because how do they start a new life? How do they survive? So no one would give them a job, no one would give them a business capital. Because the people do not just want to hear that you are in prison. If you get a job at any company, immediately you review your status to say I was in prison. You'll be fired the same day. So this is the situation uh, that motivated us to come up with an organization just to help um, support these people who are coming out of prisons. Advocate on their behalf. We just hope uh, the church will come on board to help fight this stigma. We hope the business community, we hope individuals, self motivated individuals like yourself, would come on board to just help us fight this stigma and discrimination and, in a way, lobby for support on behalf of uh, these vulnerable groups. Because some of them have children who have stopped going to school, they cannot be sponsored. What happens? These children will either go on the streets, then we'll start singing that we have plenty of street kids. But uh, we don't know where these street kids are coming from. So we have some of these uh, boys who join their fathers in prison. Because uh, after living on the street for some time, they'll start robbing people, they'll start doing all sorts of uh, you know, uh, crimes. The women are grateful and they have committed themselves to putting the funds to good use and paid back as per agreement. The women are to undergo training in entrepreneurship come September 2014, an initiative of Clement Tembo. They have also called on other stakeholders to emulate. have been suspended at the National Youth Development Council, NYDC, to facilitate investigations into alleged misappropriation of funds. The Office of the Auditor General has been engaged to prop the alleged misappropriation going as far back as 10 years ago. NYDC is a statutory body mandated to champion youth empowerment in the country. Many are the problems confronting the Zambian youth from high levels of unemployment to the HIV and AIDS scourge. These challenges hinder youth's full realization of their potential and ability to become responsible citizens and contribute to national development. 
Established in 1987 with the aim to register youth organizations, coordinate and regulate youth activities, and mobilize resources for youth development, is the National Youth Development Council, NYDC. However, the council has over the years not lived up to its mandate, at least this is according to the new council chairperson. Inherited um, the, the council. There are a number of things that caused us to be appalled. We are quite appalled when we looked at the apparent lack of you know, systems in the organization. One, we established that there were no financial management systems in the, in the council, so for ad hoc kind of arrangements in a public body like ours. Number two, and in, in a, of course, added to the, to, the, to the system that I'm talking about, including the programming system, where one or two, three staff would just sit and then go around, uh, pick with quotations, that kind of a system, and then they, they select without following actually the laid down you know, procedures in accordance with the public procurement authority, you know, act as all of us are aware. So I'm just trying to give an example. There are many, many issues that we like to effect. Then, apart from that, we also established that. Uh, that uh, the, the system of what's also managed and enforce uh, human related, human resource related issues, you are also not in place, including the body governance of systems. He blames the organization's failure to help the youths on alleged abuse and misappropriation of funds by some former staff and about four others still serving. The four staff have since been suspended to pave way for investigations. The invitation of the Zambia police is based on a number of uh, you know, prima and professional cases that uh, in uh, our fair reasoning are very serious and unless we correct those past mistakes it will be very difficult for us to build a firm foundation upon which a great Zambia is going to be built, especially that this council is charged with the responsibility to lay a firm foundation for the youth who constitute the future of Zambia and no one can afford to be careless in dealing with the issues that affect the youth of Zambia because they are the very future of, of our country. So, of course, again, I'm not going to those details because these are matters because I've commenced criminal proceedings within the uh, civil proceedings that are before the court involving former uh, employees who were fired according to the records that uh, we, have, we have found in 2005. On, uh, according to the records, uh, on the financial related uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, crime summer and they were retired, those trendy with their full benefits. Now, as I said, I will not go into those because there are many sensitive issues that uh, are surround those cases that are before court. For Dr. Xavier Chishimba charges that the council was being run without financial management system in place and ill-trained staff resulting in failure to reach youths across the country. discussion that they had. How, when we came here, the first two three months, they began to look at everybody, this cadre, this PF what, your PF, and so forth. Now let me warn that the patronic front is the party in the power. And the policy we are implementing, you are not implementing your father's or your mother's policies. We are implementing the policies of the patronic front, and it's a very serious one. So, when we are here, we are not here to implement uh, uh, any of the policies of the parties to which you belong to you, and after we expect you to be neutral and never to do anything that frustrates as everybody who will say there's evidence on the ground in terms of where we have taken this country and where it's going. So it will be very, very dangerous to try and uh, play to the dollar. And we're not going to take it lightly and to ensure that we are firm to do the right things. Justin Somi is executive director at Chawama Youth Project. He feels the latest happenings at the NYDC are denying the youth meaningful empowerment. Because uh, some of the information we just get from our colleagues, as they were, uh, I got that they have now got uh, uh, 10 provincial offices and uh, they have recruited workers and uh, also as uh, members wanted to know where this money is coming from which they will be paying these new workers. If there is an allocation, we need to know how much has been allocated to National Youth Development Council. And if there is anything to say, now you can recruit workers. There, if that can be harmonized, we hear, then we'll say it's a, a good job that uh, the new board is doing. 
He is saddened new management of the council has not been consulting affiliate youth organizations in handling council affairs. This organization, since it is based on the affiliates, so first and foremost, before everything, it should consult the affiliates and a chat way forward. What do you want to see? And the affiliates, they can propose. We want to see this and that. As they used to consult us on the review of our national youth policy, all affiliates countrywide were involved and uh, they should continue doing that. NYDC is a wing under the Ministry of Sports, Youth and Child Development. Sports Deputy Minister Mulenga Chiponde, when reached to comment on developments at NYDC, expressed ignorance. At one point, one of the sons of Africa said, and you remember very well, that if talking was an industry, Zambia or Africa would have been the most industrialized continent or country in the world. He, however, defends the new council management of having demonstrated capacity to lift up youth welfare in the country. The, the, the National Youth Development Council has come up with a, a number of um, reforms in the youth development because they are mandated to look after the affairs of the youth and develop the youth programs. So I've observed that there is a lot that is happening. I'm sure you remember very well, recently, they were even advertising for the decentralization by uh, putting up uh, uh, one small stop shop at every province so that the youth can have an avenue where to go and get information. Money can corrupt even the virtuous. The proverb says, money can corrupt even the virtuous. Well, we'll leave it at that for now, but be sure again to join us next week at the same time. On behalf of the entire SKU team, thank you so much for the pleasure of your company. Have a lovely week.